Hi guys, today we're going to look at how to troubleshoot um, sensor pairing issues with this TPMS gadget. For those of you who don't know, TPMS, uh, Tire Pressure Monitoring Gadget, um, allows you to monitor the pressure of your car tires in real time and it will alert you if the tire pressures go either too high or too low. It will also alert you if the tire temperatures go too high. Um, this is particularly, particularly useful if you are driving and one of your car tires experiences a puncture while you're driving and you don't notice it. The TPMS will sound an alarm so you know which tire is punctured and you can replace it. So uh, this particular unit has a problem with sensor pairing and so we're going to look at the unit and uh, we're going to try and fix it. So when you open the box, um, the first thing you see is a user manual. Uh, unfortunately, this user manual is very basic and uh, the English used in the user manual is not great. So it doesn't do a good job in teaching you how to pair the sensor properly. Uh, apart from that, you get a packet of uh, a wrench and four security nuts that you can use to secure the sensor to the valve stem. You have four sensors, one for each tire, rear left, rear right, front left and front right. Unfortunately, they don't have a sensor for the spare tire. It would have been good if they had that, but they don't. Uh, they have a micro USB charging cable and a reader unit that you can place on the dashboard of your car. Now, uh, so for this, let's take the reader unit out. Uh, now the reader unit has a LCD display on the front. It has three buttons on the top. The first button is a power button and a left button. The second one is a M button or a menu button. And the third one is a right button. At the side, there is a micro USB port that you can use also for charging. You don't actually need to use it because the unit comes with a built-in solar panel. And uh, as long as your car is parked somewhere sunny, uh, you actually never need to use the USB. Um, you only need to use it if you are, um, you've parked your car somewhere um, underground or in a, in a covered parking lot and the battery runs out, you can connect a USB to charge it. So um, typically what happens is when you turn on the sensor, you need to uh, hold down the power button for a couple of seconds. All right, and then the unit powers on. When the unit powers on, you see uh, uh, the, the display of a car in the middle. And these four white numbers, these are the tire pressures. These four green numbers, these are the temperatures. And over here is the unit for the pressure. We've set it to bar currently. We can actually change it to PSI. And here's the unit for the temperature. We've set it to Celsius currently. If you want, you can change it to Fahrenheit. And in this top corner, there is the battery level indicator. So how much power is left. Um, so if the, sensor was work if the sensor and the reader is working correctly, uh, after a few seconds of powering it on, you should be able to see uh, the tire pressure values. However, in this case, um, the sensors are not paired correctly. So we need to do the pairing before we can actually make use of it. The way to do it is you have the menu button here. Press and hold the menu button for a few seconds. All right, then once you go into the menu, right now we are in menu option zero. So you can press the right button or the left button to scroll through. If you press the right button, it scrolls to menu option one, two, three, and so on. And if you press the left button, it scrolls backwards. So now it's two again, one again, zero. And then if you keep pressing, it goes to seven and it goes to six. Now we can go through all of the menus. The first menu, menu zero, this is unit. So it's UNIT of uh, pressure. We can change this to PSI. In order to change it, just press the menu button once and the bar starts to blink and you can press either the left or the right button. So I'm going to go with the left button and it changes to PSI. And then you press menu once more. And then uh, going to the next menu option with the right button, you go to menu option number one, you can change the temperature unit. Uh, currently it's set to Celsius. I'm not sure if you can see it. Oh, there it is. It's set to Celsius. I prefer it in Celsius, so I'm going to leave it as it is. 
Uh, if you want to change it, you just need to press the menu button and you can scroll through. So I'm going to leave it on Celsius for now because I prefer using Celsius. Going to menu option number two, this is pH. This is pressure high. So if the tire pressure exceeds 46 PSI, the unit will start to beep an alarm. You can change that value by pressing menu button again and then you can press left or right to increase or decrease. So I'm going to decrease the pressure. Let's say um, I typically keep my, car, my tires pumped to 35 PSI. So I would like it to give me an alarm if it goes more than 41 PSI. So I set it to 41. Um, and then I go to the next menu. This is menu option number three, pressure low. So uh, at the moment, if the pressure goes below 26 PSI, the uh, unit will beep an alarm at me. Um, I want a better safety margin, so I'm going to go to 29 PSI. Uh, going to the next menu, this is menu option 4. This is temperature high, so TH. Um, currently, it's 70 degrees. So if the temperature of the tire exceeds 70 degrees Celsius, the unit will sound an alarm. Um, I feel that 70 is a bit too high where I live, so I'm going to go down to 60. 65, onwards to 60, and we're done. And then going to menu option number five, this is to swap tires. So this is more applicable if you are using the internal sensor version. The version that I have is an external sensor which you install on the valve stem. There is another version that you can actually install inside the tire. Um, when you install the sensors inside the tire, uh, sometimes you don't get the sensors on the right tire, you want to swap it around, you can do it. So if you press menu, menu, the menu button, uh, the two front tires starts to blink. And uh, if you press the menu again, it'll swap. Look how the sensor number one, which used to be here, has now gone here. And sensor number zero, which used to be here, has gone here. So that's the swap. Uh, I don't want to do it because in my case, my sensors are correct. And you can swap other sensors as well. So if you can swap 2 and 3, uh, you can swap 0 and 2, you can swap 1 and 3, and you can swap diagonally 1, 2, and so on and so forth. So I don't want to swap it, so I have to press menu. And I have to do it again to put it back. So going to the next menu option, and this is the one that we really want to look at. Menu option number 6. This is the sensor pairing menu. Now this menu is a bit tricky, so we'll come back to this in a moment. I want to go to menu option number 7. This is the factory reset menu. When you come to menu option number 7, if you want to factory reset the device, go to 7 and then just hit the menu button once and wait. There. So that's the factory reset of the device. You see the temperature has gone, uh, the pressure has gone back to bar and uh, the entire uh, unit has been reset. So now that we've reset the device, um, we can go back to the menu. All right. I'm just going to change the bar back to PSI because I prefer PSI. Hit menu again. And then I'm going to use the left button to go to menu option number six. Now this is the sensor pairing menu. Um, here, this is where we actually need to pair each sensor to the reader device. This is the ID number of the sensor. Sensor zero is the left front or the front left, which is this one. Then if I go to the next one, oops, sorry. I hit menu and then the sensor ID starts to blink. Go to the next one. Sensor one is the front right, which is this one. Sensor two is the rear left, which is this one. And sensor three is the rear right, which is this one. And we can actually verify this by opening up the sensors and looking at the number that's printed inside. Um, to do that, we need to get our wrench inside this packet. So I'm going to do that really quick. Uh, 
and we can go ahead and grab one of these sensors. I'm going to take front left because that's number one. If you turn it around, you can see that there is a shape of a nut here. Just put the wrench in and it's a tight fit and turn the screw, screw this out and you've got the cap opened. So this is the cap and these sensors, the batteries are actually replaceable. Um, so if the battery runs out, you can actually replace it. Uh, our intention though is to look at what is the sensor number for this. So just use your wrench and push the battery out. And it uses one of these button cell batteries. Uh, this one is a CR1632H and it's a 3 volt battery. Now once you take the battery out, you can see there is a number printed on the sensor. This is a sensor ID number zero. Okay, so you can put the battery back in. And that number corresponds to the one that you can see in the menu. So if I go to the menu, and then I go to menu option number six, all right? So sensor zero is referring to the number that you saw in this sensor. So the way I prefer to do it, I don't think you actually need to do it, but I, I just want to do it in the most foolproof way. What I do is I open up all four sensors and I take the battery out of it. So once you open up all four sensors, push the battery out of it. You can use the wrench because it's a bit difficult to come out. And repeat the step for all four. Take the battery out completely and then you can begin the pairing process. So go to menu option number six, go to sensor ID zero, hit the menu again so that the bottom number blinks. All right, so now imagine all four sensors. You have disconnected the battery and you want to pair sensor zero. So take sensor zero, make sure it is sensor zero, confirm it with the number at the bottom here. Okay, insert the battery into the sensor, make sure to screw it in tightly because you have to make sure that it's waterproof. So uh, get the wrench and make sure it's really tight. Oops, dropped it there. Make sure it's really tight. And then while this is still blinking, connect this into the valve stem of your tire. And when once you connect it, you will see this number, 629E, it'll change to a unique identifier of this sensor. And once you do that, you will see that this number stops blinking and the, the reader will start blinking this number again. And that's when you know the sensor is paired. Repeat the same process one by one for each of the other sensors. So let's say we've already done front left now we want to do front right, so make sure you go to the next one, which is sensor ID number one. Hit the menu button so the bottom one blinks. Put the battery back in, screw it in tight, and then install it into your tire. And this number will change, and the reader will start blinking this number again, number one again. And then sensor one is paired. Repeat it again for the other sensors and once you do that you'd be done and if you go back to the main menu so just hold this you will start seeing the pressure values of all four tires that is how you pair these sensors to this reader i hope that helps you let me know in the comments below if you have any challenges i'll, I'll respond to the comments um, and i hope you have pleasant driving experience with this tpms system Thank you and take care.